Hi, welcome to another edition of Azure Data Factory, Introduction to Azure Data Factory series. My name is Jam Demirjola. Today I'm going to be discussing how custom uh, .NET Active works in Azure Data uh, Factory paradigm. Um, and in order to demonstrate this, uh, this concept, I am taking a, a real business scenario. If TP is not out of the box supported by Azure Data Factory, there is no um, sync or source definition for FTP in the copy active, you cannot find it. Hence, you need to build your one for yourself. And I need to build one of them because of work-related issues. <coughs> Sorry. And this is my uh, basic FTP task or FTP pipeline. Here I define two containers, uh, the input blob and output blob, and in between my FTP activity. In the input blob and the output blob, the only things that I'm defining are the container definitions. Why it's important? Because let's say my um, I have a bunch of input blobs, and um, the input blobs can be from an SAP system, can be from CRM system, can be from um, Salesforce system, or any kind of line of business application. As long as the directory structure between these blobs are the same, I can FTP all these together in one activity to a location, to an FTP server. I can do the same thing on the, the output side. Output side is used um, to get the data from an FTP location. So if you want to distribute the data to different places, you can have multiple outputs and it's going to get distributed. So um, the only um, the only reason why I have these two are not only to make ADF happy, but also to have uh, multiple inputs and multiple outputs. You'll see what I mean pretty soon. The rest of the FTP metadata is residing under FTP activity pipeline activity FTP, <laughs> FTP activity pipeline, and um, it's defined as an extended properties. Now I'm going to come to that one. So here's my definition or some part of the, the code of my pipeline. Um, I start with my type and it's a .NET uh, activity type. As a transformation I define my assembly name, I define my entry points, I define my package link service where this particular DLL is residing at. And then I need to define the container that this link service is pointing to um, and also the, the actual files where they are located at. And they have to be in a zip file format, just FYI. The rest of the code is depend upon your need. Um, in my case, I need to define a bunch of parameters um, to make the FTP happen and make it flexible uh, based on my business need. The first parameter is the FTP host, the second one is login, password, operation, whether it's put or get. And then here I have a parameter called FTPS, whether I want to use FTPS or not, true or false. Include subdirectories, whether I want to download or upload all the virtual directories or the real directories in an FTP server, it's an, again, another true or false uh, boolean. The next two are the paths that are defined on the Azure side and the FTP side. So if you define the Azure side and you say put, then that means it is going to look at to this particular directory and get all the data that's residing in this particular directory and then push it over to the FTP server. Um, and at the FTP server, it's going to look for this directory and uh, push the data to that particular link server, to that particular location. So just be aware of it. In the get operation, the same is true, but the opposite. So this is how the metadata works. Um, let me show you how the actual application looks like, and maybe we can run it real quick so that it takes a little bit of time, so that's why I'm planning on running it. So here I change my definition a little bit. Instead of puts, I'm using a get definition and I'm going to be using FTPS. It's going to include all the subdirectories. It's going to um, put the data under Azure uh, app logs virtual directory. And here, as you can see, I'm not defining the container name. The container name is coming from 
the, the input side. So just be aware of that fact. And here's my uh, server URI. So let's kick off this job. This is going to take about two minutes, as I said. And while it is cooking, I can show some other features. So how the data looks like right now, this is my container. This is where my FTP activity resides at. And what I'm expecting is I'm expecting a bunch of more um, files. And where they are going to come from, they are going to be coming from um, this particular FTP location. This is my FTP location. As you can see, I have a bunch of directories, and I do expect to receive all of them. And I have a bunch of files as well. So we will see a bunch of files and a bunch of directories pretty soon. Now, since this while this one is cooking, I can show you the code that I wrote in order to make this one happen. It is um, using the um, i.NET activity. It, it inherits from the i.NET activity. I create an FTP activity by inheriting that, that class. And in order to inherit, you need to implement the execute uh, method. And execute method involves um, your input tables, output tables, extended properties, and the logger as the last parameter. I'm not going to go through the, the code. It is pretty long and it's getting pretty l every day it's getting longer and longer because we're adding new features. But the most important part I think is where I define my how I use my extended properties. Here I'm getting my extended properties as a uh, um, as an enumerable, and uh, by calling the, the names of the properties, I'm getting the values. As you can see, I'm converting them to the booleans, and the rest is pretty simple. Um, this particular execute method is returning i dictionary, but I'm not. I don't have any other activity that's, um, that needs this data. Hence, I'm just returning a blank i dictionary. So the last thing that I want to show you with respect to the project is uh, once you build the application, what you need to do is, I'm not going to build it now since the application is running, uh, it's going to, it would crash. Um, you need to take the directory, um, this is my debug directory, and you need to zip it, and you need to take this FTP activity, it's a zip file now, um, and put it up to a particular container. Well, if you are debugging your code, it is pretty laborious because it takes already a uh, considerable amount of time, especially if you do it over and over again on the ADF side to run the code. And plus, um, going through this manual operation is a little bit painful. Hence, what I did was I created a post build activity, which involves three steps. The first step is to delete already existing zip files. The second step is uh, using 7-zip. Um, I'm zipping the, the directory that I'm interested in. And the last activity involves actually pushing the data to Azure Blob Storage using AZ copy. This way, everything's automated, and it is, it is extremely quick for me to, to deploy uh, my new code bits to the production. Now, oh, let's take a look, and it just succeeded. So we are good to go. Let's see my Azure Blob Storage Explorer, and here we go. These are the new files that just came from the FTP side. Um, as you know, I have a bunch of files over here, which is um, like 28 or 2014-1208, and we should see, yeah, right here. These were not there, and they just showed up a couple minutes ago. So um, my demonstration is, um, is ending. If you guys have any questions or comments in with respect to ADF or uh, uh, anything related to Azure, uh, let me know. You can either tech, um, send me a message at cemd at abacustms.com or just comment on this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.